This is the afternoon edition of the Weather Extreme video. This is for Tuesday, April 1. Uh, pretty quiet through midweek. Some rain at the end of the week. Don't think that will be a problem. Really, the bigger issue could be as the weekend ends Sunday night uh, with new data coming in. We'll take a look at all of this. We'll uh, first off start with some sky cam shots. Everybody happy with the weather, I think, today. Lots of sunshine. That's our Decatur sky cam overlooking the Tennessee River. Some folks are right around 80 this afternoon. Another river shot, that's the Alabama River, as seen from our sky cam at Selma, looking over at the Edmund Pettus Bridge. And that's always a beautiful shot. The Alabama Gulf Coast is seen from the Phoenix All Suites on a sunny, early April day. Very active pattern around the uh, continent. We've got one uh, strong short wave lifting up out of the Great Lakes into eastern Canada. Another big system slamming into the northern Pacific coast, and that will create some havoc for the southern plains in coming days. Yeah, we have see, see some 80s up on that map. 80 for Anniston, Decatur, Huntsville, Muscle Shoals, Birmingham and Tuscaloosa, 77. We'll see numbers like that through midweek. And that cold air you see up north will not bother us anytime soon, but there's increasing evidence toward the end of next week, a late a yeah, late season frost or freeze situation setting up, so growers beware. If you'll hang on here, you'll see that in the uh, modeling we'll show you here in just a minute. Watches and warnings, not many uh, today. A red flag warning for parts of Alabama. That's for a wildfire danger. Also some counties out to the west, but generally speaking, things are calm. Uh, it is possible we could see a few severe storms tonight around the Red River, uh, Texas and Oklahoma border, also around Kansas City. And then tomorrow, a larger slight risk area from Dallas-Fort Worth to St. Louis. And within that, there is an enhancement that would include Tulsa, Oklahoma City, Wichita, Kansas. And I think this is going to be the uh, most significant outbreak, day three. This is Thursday. A uh, standard slight risk from East Texas up into central Indiana. This is basically from near Houston to Indianapolis. And again, that does include the northwestern corner of Alabama, and this is for late tomorrow night and really the pre-dawn hours Friday. And the storm should weaken as they move uh, down our way, and we don't expect any major problems here Friday. Uh, the enhancement on day three, and again, this is uh, Thursday and Thursday night, west of the state, some of the cities in that uh, enhanced risk would be Little Rock and Memphis, uh, Greenville, Mississippi, uh, Monroe, Louisiana, St. Louis, We'll sure be watching with great interest. But beyond that, there is no formal risk for uh, for Friday. Uh, but we're starting to be a little concerned about the uh, thing late in the weekend, as you'll see. Uh, rain a lot. Uh, this is through Tuesday morning of next week. This is for the next seven days. And this is suggesting some folks around here will see three to four inches of rain. But then again, this is typically the wettest time of the year. It's not that surprising to see numbers like that. We'll take a look at the modeling. This is the GFS, the Global Forecast System, valid uh, tomorrow afternoon at 1 o'clock. This is at 500 millibars. You can see the new troughing developing in the west. But down below that, our day should be nice, uh, partly sunny with highs in the upper 70s. And like today, some folks could touch 80. Uh, active weather possible to the west. The surface low is located over southeast Colorado. And tomorrow afternoon, tomorrow night, uh, severe storms could erupt ahead of the dry line, uh, mainly east of I-35. And we'll be watching those with interest, but those should not bother us. Thursday, the trough moves on to the east. And in response to that, we have a 1,000 millibar load that is on the uh, Oklahoma-Kansas border. Thursday night, just after midnight, this is 1 a.m. Friday. The surface load deepens. Uh, it's between Des Moines and Chicago, 995 millibars with a trailing band of showers and storms. And clearly, you can see why there's some concern of tornado activity over parts of uh, maybe southern Missouri and Arkansas Thursday afternoon, Thursday evening, uh, where they are in a very favorable position for that. And what's going to happen more than likely, all of that will roll over into a squall line after midnight Thursday night. And then this is Friday at midday, Friday at 1 o'clock. Uh, that deep surface low is uh, located near Grand Rapids, Michigan, with a trailing batch of showers and storms coming down in through here. Just for the fun of it, this is the NAM, North American Mesoscale model, same time, Friday at 1. Very similar look. The surface low is closer to Chicago, 988 millibars, but a weakening band of showers stretching down through Alabama. Take a look at some of the uh, parameters Friday. Again, this is all at uh, 1 o'clock. This is the trough position at 500 millibars. You can see the dynamic forcing primarily north of here. 
This is the surface-based CAPE. The instability values, numbers have come down a little bit on this run. Still, uh, numbers are in excess of 1,000 joules. Uh, typically between 1,000 and 2,000 joules in advance of the front. Uh, that's fairly, you know, buoyant for uh, the 1st of April. But uh, like we've talked about, you know, instability is not the only thing you need. I mean, in, in the summer, the air is excessively unstable every day. Uh, this is the shear, and there basically is none. Uh, so that means no real tornado threat. And the low-level jet core the higher winds way, way northeast of here. So like we've talked about, I think what's going to happen, we'll have a band of severe storms, a line of severe storms, a linear type thing moving into the shoals uh, sometime between midnight and 6 o'clock, uh, early, early Friday morning. And uh, the storms could be severe as they move into northwest Alabama, potential for strong, maybe damaging winds around Florence, but they should weaken as they move east and south. And by the time they reach us, uh, we don't expect any severe weather on Friday. Uh, but again, clearly a chance of showers and some thunder. All right, Saturday, we start the weekend. Should be a nice day. Uh, the sky should be uh, mostly sunny as dry air takes over. A little cooler, high around 70, the GFS printing 69. But, ooh, it comes right back. This is Sunday. Surface low is on the Louisiana coast, and uh, now the GFS is beginning more aggressive, uh, trending toward the European, showing that we're going to have to mention a good chance of rain uh, beginning during the day Sunday. This is Sunday night at... Uh, just after midnight, 1 a.m. Monday, the uh, surface low on the GFS is located uh, really around Chatham, north of Mobile. And if this is right, we're just going to get rain. And then Monday, the surface low is near Greenville, South Carolina, and the rain is out of here. But the European uh, looks a little more disturbing for Sunday night. Uh, uh, instead of having the surface low north of Mobile, it has the surface low north of Memphis. And instead of just a soaking rain, that would set up a, a strong storm situation. Again, this is 1 a.m. Monday, just after midnight Sunday night. Uh, this is the instability coming off the European. And again, those numbers are not overwhelming. Uh, those shades of blue, that's, uh, you know, 500 to 600 joules per kilogram. But that's certainly sufficient with dynamic support like that. And this is the low-level jet, and the winds are, are on up there. In fact, they're at uh, 60 knots or higher. So uh, the dynamics look very excellent for uh, strong, maybe severe storms late Sunday night or early Monday morning, uh, if this is right. But remember, the GFS is saying, no, it's not right. The surface low is going to be to the south, and it's just going to rain here. So confidence is low, but obviously our interest is greatly increased in this system as the weekend wraps up and uh, we get into Monday of next week. We'll keep an eye on things and watch the trends. Uh, this is Tuesday. Evidence the day will be kind of uh, cloudy and cool. Uh, maybe highs only in the 50s up in the Tennessee Valley. Maybe some lingering drizzle in spots. And again, uh, we go out there toward the middle of next week. This is Wednesday the 9th, the week from tomorrow. Troughing over the east, ridging over the west. And look at the thickness values coming down. Uh, again, this is Wednesday of next week, and you know what that means. That following day is going to be cold. These are temperature anomalies for Thursday morning, April 10th. And if these numbers verify, we're going to be down in the 20s and low 30s again. A frost and a freeze for many places. Can we be specific this far in advance? No, but we can certainly look at pattern recognition and trends, and the trend is just screaming. That's going to be the last big cold snap. And we always tell people there's always going to be one of these April cold snaps, and here it is. Uh, so I would not be planting anything that would be damaged by a freeze uh, at this point. Go out there deeper in the month, April 14th, a little batch of showers coming in. April 17th, we are dry. That's it for the Weather Extreme video today. We'll have notes in the blog next video here by 7 o'clock tomorrow morning. If you can, catch us this evening on the live stream of the television site, ABC 3340 News at 4, 5, 6, and 10 o'clock. Thanks for watching. Have a great evening, and God bless.